Hello YouTube, my name is Paul and today I'm reviewing the eye gauging 6 inch Absolute Origin caliper. For years now I've been using cheap generic calipers. I've probably gone through uh, three or four of them in the last five years. This is an example of one. They all look more or less the same as this. They sold on eBay, on Amazon, Home Depot sells some of them, my local hardware stores in New Zealand sell them. And they range in price from about 7 US dollars to 30 US dollars, depending on the packaging and the brand name. The problem with them is they're all rubbish. If you open and close them too fast, or you bang against the, the, the end of it, they, they, they lose their origin, they, the measurement goes off by a couple of millimeters. Now, I'm not, I'm not an industrial user, I'm not a, a, a technician, um, but you know, I'm a home hobbyist, I use a 3D printer, but it's still incredibly irritating if uh, I'm measuring a part and it screws off, you know, I print a part on a 3D printer for four hours, I then come back and find that you know, it's off slightly because I measured it wrongly. And then I have to do, you know, I then have to go back to the CAD software, modify it, and then you know, wait another four hours before my part is finished. With these cheap calipers, I could just never be sure that the measurement I got was the, the real measurement. And I would have to be so careful. You know, I'd open them and close them really slowly, trying not to mess anything up. Half the time, I ended up just going back to, uh, you know, a tape measure. So, I did a lot of research to find a caliper that was reliable and accurate enough for my purposes. Um, the one I found was the eye gauging, absolute origin caliper. Eye gauging is uh, an American firm. Um, although these are made in China, it cost me 45 US dollars. This is about six months ago. They're now selling for, I think, 40 US dollars. I'll bring up a, a page to show you. They're, this is the cheapest version they have. Um, there's also uh, different sizes. There's one that's a meter in width, that's 40 inches. Now, it looks very similar to those cheap calipers that you know I showed you just before. The reason is that the eye gauging calipers and the, the cheap eBay calipers are both uh, patterned after the Japanese Mitsutoyo uh, brand. Now, I'm probably pronouncing that wrongly. That's the gold standard for calipers. Um, you know, a friend of mine owns a factory. That's what he uses to calibrate his equipment. Being a home hobbyist, I didn't feel I needed that kind of an expensive $120 caliper for the kind of stuff I'm doing. I just wanted something that was reliable um, that I could trust. Let's take a closer look at this caliper. The most important feature of this caliper is the absolute origin functionality. This means that when you set the origin, in this case I'm going to set it right at the end, it's already zero, it will keep that regardless of how you move this around. So I go back, it'll always be zero. So I'm just going back to zero. Now you can do this quite aggressively. You can hit the slam it against the end and it'll always be zero every time. Um, I haven't been able to uh, confuse it yet. Now, compare this to a cheap Chinese caliper. So, this is set. I'm just going to set the origin to zero. Okay. Now, I'm going to move this around. Bash it around a bit. And now, okay, now it's off by a whole 32.4 millimeters. Um, now, there I, I, I was quite aggressive. But even if you, sometimes just moving it a bit too fast and something slips, um, its position will be off. So let's take a look at the features this caliper has. Like uh, most calipers that are copies of the uh, Mitsutoyo uh, brand, um, it has your, your inside uh, measurement. Let's turn that on. So your inside here, your outside measurement here, and then a depth gauge at the bottom. Um, in the box, you get this uh, depth gauge adapter. So I'll just take this out. I'll show you how it goes on. It slides on. Over there, you just need to hold it down on a flat surface and then tighten this locking mechanism. What this does, it stops this wobbling around when you're measuring depth. Yeah, it, it works quite well. Um, I haven't, I don't tend to need to measure depth all that often, but uh, the couple of times I have, uh, it's worked flawlessly. Um, let's see what else we get in the box. It comes up with this uh, calibration certificate um, that has the serial number, it's the inspector's name, although it's, it's no signature, and a date. So this was inspected uh, uh, probably, probably a few months before I purchased it. Um, it shows that it's a tolerance of 0 0.001 inches, that's uh, 0 0.025 millimeters, I think. Um, now, it is slightly suspicious that uh, 
that this is all printed on. So the only issue with certificate if it passes all the tests, but I would have preferred to see that um, Inspector, Inspector Lee actually went through, ran each test, and then ticked the box. Um, now, this isn't a traceable certificate. What this means is that um, we don't know that the, or we can't verify that the, the gauge blocks they were using to do these measurements. So they get a block that says it's exactly, um, let's say, 25 millimeters, and then they check that this measures within the, the specified tolerance is 25 millimeters. Now, what happens if the block they're testing isn't, in fact, 25 millimeters? It's, it's got rubbed or shaved off uh, a little bit. So then this would be calibrated to an incorrect measurement. Um, for my purposes, uh, I don't need traceability. Um, you know, if you're doing, if you're producing products and, uh, you know, your quality control will cost you a little money if it's not right, then you want um, a traceable certificate that essentially tells you what lab um, the equipments were calibrated against. And then that lab can tell you who they were calibrated against and you basically can trace it all the way back to the metric standards in a vault in France. In the box, you also get um, an instruction manual. Um, there's not much to it. It tells you what its uh, resolution is. Um, I, that's what it says. I don't know how, how I, it's well, there's the accuracy 0 0.01 inch plus minus 0 0.2 millimeters. It's a bit of a strange to mix inches and millimeters. Um, it's got IP64 um, humidity and dust resistance. Um, it does appear to be legitimate um, waterproofing. If we look at the battery compartment, this is a CR2032. It's got the silicon seal to make sure water doesn't get in there. Um, not that I would take this anywhere near water. I wouldn't want to risk uh, something going wrong and you know messing up the calibration. It uh, what it doesn't have, and that is a bit frustrating, is it doesn't have auto off functionality. So these cheap ones will turn off automatically um, after a period of time. This, on the other hand, won't. Now it says it's got a battery life of two years. I'm not entirely sure what that means. Practically speaking, I don't know whether that means two years of use or you can leave this on for two years and it's not going to run out of uh, battery but I frequently forget to turn this off um, and I mean it's it's not really doing anything it's just running a, a liquid crystal display um, but still it's, it would be a bit of a pain to, to replace this battery too often now in the box it comes with a, a, a battery inside and then a you know a, a cheap um, CR2032 uh, lithium cell which is nice. I think that's because they, they don't know how long this is sitting on the store shelves and are slowly using up the battery life. So they include this. So you have a you have a good two years of use before you need to buy a new battery. The case, as you can see here, is quite a nice sturdy case. Um, doesn't have much flex. But I haven't found any problems with the accuracy of this uh, device. Um, it has some functions. You can switch between uh, inches and millimeters. It also has um, inches, both decimal and fractional inches. I don't know. Uh, uh, there we go. So there's your, your fractional inches if you want to do the maths for what a, a 19 sixty-fourths of an inch is. Um, of course, here in New Zealand, we use uh, metric. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. Um, please subscribe and uh, I'll see you next time.